Once again, the Senate has bailed on Canadians and proven themselves irrelevant by not stopping Bill C-11 in its tracks. Like, why are they even a body? <gasps> what are their roles and who sets their expectations for delivery? Like, I thought the Senate it was considered the second nonpartisan look, but at this point, they appear fairly irrelevant. I mean, they did make some amendments after the first reading and sent it back to the House, but their suggested amendments were ignored. <laughs> and Bill C-11 just passed. Now, it appears they were just practicing how to, how to ask for an amendment and see if their opinions were considered even relevant. But being dealt any opposition must have been a shock to the coalition group. So, you know, they played a chess game and hey, they won. <laughs> so, do we really need a Senate? I mean, I, I really took some time to determine who sits on the Senate and found three prairie provinces hold six seats each with more than one million each in population, along with BC and sitting at five million in population. But they only hold six seats. Ontario and Quebec each hold 24 seats, while New Brunswick and Nova Scotia each hold 10 seats with much smaller populations than any Western province. I mean, this imbalance in numbers needs a serious review. Freedom of speech in Canada is facing the greatest threat with the passing of Bill C-11. I, I, I fear this is only the beginning. While they deny it to the still standing press, the government is gaining influence over newsrooms and TV along with certain programming. The next step is to gain control over our social media, the newsrooms and talk TV. When liberals demand social media censorship, free speech, it's in trouble. Now, the fulcrum point in history is where we are always heading. There have been just too many signs for too many years. People are still looking aghast that their government is so brazenly trampling on their liberties. This is not how the story is supposed to go. I mean, our refusal to relinquish what is our right will help ensure future generations will still know freedom. The Trudeau government will argue they're preserving Canadian content and other forums, but I mean, we know it won't stop there. You know, they will say outside interests will have to pay to be heard or seen in Canada. They say, what does that even mean? But you know what, most believe that all people have the right to speak their minds, however objectionable their comments. However, however, my worst moment as a taxpayer, citizen, or even as a business person after the thousands of names on petitions, letters, and emails that we all in some way may have participated and sent to you know, MPs and Senate members, but they've gone ignored. I don't know. I feel the movement to constrain freedom of speech and what we see and hear will ease off with enough objections. From what I understand, there will be Plenty of hoops to jump through for the government to determine how this, this first element of censorship can proceed. But we must continue to struggle to protect our freedoms by convincing others that censoring, or censorship rather, against anyone inevitably leads to censorship against everyone. This time, it's not just about Alberta.